you. All right. What's up? How's it going? Hope you're doing well and fine. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome. I'll be your host for the evening. And uh, what are we working on? Well, in this stream, we work on uh, stuff usually in Haskell. Build um, various projects, whatever they may be. Uh, not like totally beginner, not totally like super advanced stuff, but just practical everyday things. Or not so everyday things, maybe, as the case may be. Lately, you've been doing a fair bit of game dev. And that's what we're going to continue on with today. Uh, we have been working on this cool game called Lambda Trek. Lambda Trek, uh, if you don't know what it looks like, is, and you don't know much about it, it's based off of a really ancient series of games called Star Trek or Super Trek, and it's many, many, many variants. And we're building our own variant today, and for the past few weeks, a bunch of weeks. And uh, what does that look like? It looks like this. Let me get me a, a WSL terminal. Uh, so we're going to go to my project directory. We're going to go to Lambda Track. Lambda Track. And this is what we got so far. We have a little star field. We have a little info panel. All right, we got our command input area here. We can go like three, four, we can move around. And it takes up some of our energy. So on and so forth. All right, if we try to move outside of the uh, the quadrant area, we get a little area, a uh, little error. All right, if we try to move into a star, we have this little dialogue area. This is where game parts of our game, the the crew members of our starship, that's the little S here, can uh, you know tell us what's going on. So Helm says like, I we can't move it at ten ten. There's a star there. That's what this little star is. There's an enemy ship here, and we're just in the middle of implementing combat. So if we uh, move a little closer to that ship, uh, let's see, move, uh, say four. All right, we can fire our phasers, and we get us some emergent, some energy number, and we damage the ship for thirty-nine. Pretty straightforward, huh? All right. So that's where we're at. And the next phase of this, I'm thinking, is that we need to add a little variance to the combat. So when a phaser hit is hits an enemy ship, all right, the enemy ship's going to have some shields. We should have a little variance for, you know, little distortions in the local space-time continuum, and uh, you know, randomize the damage just a just a little tweak. Uh, subtract the enemy shields, and then that'll be the damage and that should get reported by combat there. And then uh, after that, we should destroy ships. So when you uh, take out all the enemy's remaining hit points, all right, that should destroy them and remove them from the map. All right. And then once we get to that point, I think we'll update the dialogue so that we can get like the damage reported, not as like these numbers, but as like that was a heavy hit or that was an epic hit that kind of thing just so the players kind of like gotta gotta get and then maybe we can like report how much damage the ship has left by getting like a, like a status report kind of thing uh, i'm not gonna stop so we'll see we'll see how we go from there so let's go and work on just tweaking that that combat formula there, that, that damage formula. Chow. Of course, if this is your first time tuning in and you're not a regular watcher here, yeah, maybe you're just interested in Haskell, maybe you don't do a whole lot, maybe you do do a whole lot. But if you have any questions, whatever they may be, feel free to interrupt at any point in time. Happy to answer them. Okay. 
So we're going to go and loop it up our project. A chow. Okay. So all of our stuff lives, at least as far as, as far as the simulation goes, lives in the simulation model. Uh, we just added this combat module, which is where all the combat type stuff code takes place, like handling phaser fire. So we have two kinds of phaser fire, automatic and manual. We haven't gotten to manual yet. We're just focusing on phaser fire. And I think the damage calculation, whether you do it automatically or visa manual phaser fire, uh, the calculation should be roughly, roughly the same. And we need a function that will do that, which will take into all those variables into account, calculate how much damage is actually going to be applied to the ship, and then report back how much should be applied to the enemy ship. All right, then we'll update the enemy ship by subtracting the energy, and, um, and then do the damage report. Okay, so first things first, if we're going to implement any kind of like randomness, right, we're going to need a random number generator or a source for this. So let's go into package. And we're going to add random. I think that's the package if I remember correctly. I got the builder going here. Lambda track. Ow. Yeah, we'll get the builder going. Now, we should probably actually, I think, I think we have tests for the combat. Yeah, and that's probably based off of hard numbers, so we should probably need to keep an eye on that. Maybe I'll get the test test runner going, actually, instead of just the plane builder. Back, test, uh, fast, and file watch. Okay, random. We'll keep that going. Okay. So, um, now if we want to add some randomness, how do we do that? Go to combat. We're gonna have to add our like kind of global random number source to the state of the game. Add it here, say. Um, random generator. You know the type of that thing comes from the random package. System.random. This is the one. Yeah, so I think we're gonna want a random gen Stateful, stateful gem. Monadic pseudo random number generator.
So, huh, okay. I haven't used this part of system random before. Let's see, rolls M takes a, is a stateful gen function, a stateful gen GM constraint, some int, stateful gen G thing, I guess there's a generator, and the result, some monad list of words. And we sample it uniform one to six. Uh, so we, we, we call this action a certain number of times. Okay, so we create a generator. And then we call our rolls n with the gen 10 as our int. Okay, and the generator as g is an IO action. Hmm. Is there like a transformer interface for this so we can stack it with ours or should we just use the random gen yeah it's st is our stateful or mutable generator Interesting, let's just stick with random gen. So I'm gonna import system.random. Expects a type as a parameter, so let's see, int. Yeah, no, that's not the right type, because it's a constraint there. It's a random. It's also a class. That's it. That's what I'm looking for. Standard generator. Okay, now there is no instance of board for this because there isn't. Dang. What do we need ord for? I think it might be the, oh, it might be the library, uh, brick. No, no, this is not good. I don't like it. This is not nice. Although maybe we don't need it.
Although that only broke a couple of times. Maybe maybe we don't need ore there. Maybe that was something. Okay. Let's fix this and see if we can get it back to compiling and hopefully it'll just shake out. Um, so stuff gen needs to be initialized here. Uh, we're going to pass that in. Because right, we'll initializing the standard generator, I believe, has to be done in. Uh, yeah, we can do it deterministically by giving it some integer, or we can initialize it from I/O. So we'll do that, like in the main entry point of our program. We'll initialize that, pass it in here. Okay. So then. Yeah, so that's that's what's complaining about that now. So here. Now is in its stood gen Gonna use system entropy when it is available, falling back on the system time as the seed. Probably good enough for us. And we'll in it was it in it? In it stud gen. In it the standard generator. Give it to initial game state. Super. And from then on, it's basically a pure, pure operation. is no problem. Okay, I guess we didn't... Maybe we didn't need that ord instance. Let's just check our build here. Okay, some tests... Here are failing because of equality checks. So we need to fix up that. Okay, so... Initial game state takes a parameter now. Uh, we can still. Is there any? If there's an equality instance, yeah, there, there should be an equality instance on it. So we should, yeah, there is. So we should still be able to do that as long as we construct it with the same um, thing. Um, so let's import system dot random and um, let's see. Initial state, uh, we'll have to initialize you with a particular random generator. And we'll call it initial game state. Uh, we have the um, muck make standard generator function. I'll just do a zero. How many we do expected state should be expected state. That one should be nailed down. And we have to do it a bunch more times. In this update simulation block. gen equal mux standard gen of zero. I 
There should be those ones. Ah, System.random, of course, isn't available here because we forgot to add it in the package. this and this one's just that there we go we're back okay good to know good to know good to know so yeah that's how we initialize it and add a random generator to the game state let's go ahead and commit that Add a little random generator to game state. Okay. Back to our combat module. Okay, okay, okay. Now, what do we need? We need to be able to sample that random generator to get a number that we can use uh, to in our formula. Should we have the uh, let's let's create the damage calculation function, and if we need. To, to separate out stuff from there, we'll we'll figure it out. All right. So handling phase, uh, fire phasers, we should have a uh, calculate phaser damage function. Yeah, what is that going to take? That's going to take an integer the, as the energy amount that was input by the user. And it's going to be in the state game state. And it's going to return the energy, the amount to apply to the, um, to the enemy. Make it do nothing for now, other than just return its argument. Okay, sure. Yeah, let's see. Dun, 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 dun. So where we calculate the damaged enemies. Is right there. Um, the damage amount. Hmm. I was thinking, actually, when I was thinking about this, I was like, yeah, we, I was thinking like a term here would be calculate the phaser damage, but we also need the enemy that we're targeting and hitting because we want to be able to like take into account their shields. And this like very, the slight randomness that we want to add to it. So it's not really damage amount, that's energy amount. 
So I'm going to start by renaming that. Energy amount. All right, and enemies is the list of enemies in phaser range. So we could turn this into a map M. And make a damage enemy the staple function rather than calculate phaser damage. I think that's probably what this code wants us to do. So let's do that. Okay, MapM is slightly different in type. Uh, let me look it up so you can see. Map so the function has to be AMB. We got something that we can traverse that has a bunch of A's in it. That'll be the enemies, yeah, each enemy in, in range. And then returns in a state T, basically. It's gonna be a state, state monad. So in order to get that to work, damage enemy is gonna be the thing. And Second, second is what we've been using in the map in order to just touch the enemy part because enemies is also the index into the array. That might need to be an F map. Because a damage enemy is going to be changed here. It's in the enemy module. Go there. Yeah. I'm gonna this is hmm this is the function that is setting the amount we're subtracting the amount from the enemy's current hit points and here is where we want to do the stateful sort of calculation. So I think what I want to call this is applied damage. Up, up, up. <laughs> I'm a uh, apply damage. I call old amount hit points. Okay, so now it's applied damage. Let's get rid of that. And yeah, it's just that that type error is fine. That's the one we expect to be right there for now. Okay. So then we're gonna call this damage enemy or calculate enemy damage. I don't know why I keep calling it damage. 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 Okay. 
And this will be done all. Calculate. Enemy. Damage. Okay, still not, still not a functor, no. Mm-hmm, okay. I don't mind if calculate enemy damage is... Um, the topple that we know about. Although, maybe now it'll actually work. This is where this is looking a little better now, so we should be able to um, do what we need to do here. So uh, amount. We can call it mm, damage energy mount mount. And then we have the index and the enemy that we're targeting. Okay, and now we can we can do all kinds of stuff. Let's just do the random variance. Okay, so what I want to be able to do is uh, get like a random phaser factor. Like a damage factor. Uh, calculate enemy phaser damage. Maybe it'll be general that enough that we could have, like, just apply, calculate the enemy damage, period. But we're going to simulate phasers a little bit differently, I guess. At, like, at least to start. From, like, something like another weapon type that we might introduce. Or, like, missiles or torpedoes, so to speak, uh, later on. Um, but I think those might behave differently. They certainly do in the fiction. So factor would uh, we get some random phaser factor, and then we need to look at the enemy's shields. Well, no, we're just going to do the random phaser factor first. That's right. So we're gonna the random phaser factor is going to be like some amount we can mm, multiply by to change the, the amount of damage. So then we were gonna ret basically return index with um, apply enemy dot apply damage. Uh, 
And that's going to be amount multiplied by the factor and enemy. Okay, so we just have to implement random phaser factor now uh, to get this to work. That's kind of like a helper function. I'm going to put it down here, maybe. Random phaser factor. And this is going to be a uh, state, game state, and it's going to return a. Uh, Gonna return to a double, and we actually have to floor the calculation, I suppose. Or a float. Maybe a float. Leave that undefined for now. Um, because the other type error is gonna be up here. And then we're gonna have to floor that. Or we can fudge it by bumping it up. Feeling. Yeah, we can't match type int with actual type float. Um, we have to convert the int, so we'll have to use from integral. Is going to be uh, redundant to get rid of that. All right, there we go. A random phaser factor. Okay, so now for random phaser factor, we need a number that is like around one. It could be like 0.9, it could be like 1.1 or 1.01, something like this. Get stud random. No, we want we don't want the system the global ones. We want the the pure ones. There we go. Okay, so we can get just a random float within a range. takes a little high. Okay, this should be good. So first things first is we're going to need the uh, generator. Out of the state. And I think we have a lens for that now, don't we? Use. Game state random gen. And We just have to give our, our range here. We're like maybe mm, mm, negative How are we gonna do this? Uh
Yeah, somewhere between negative zero, not, not point 0.9 and 1.1, 1 .1, say. Right. System that random here. No, oh, I get the armor arguments wrong. No, gee. Oh, right, and we have to put the generator back in once we use it. So it returns this tuple here, the value, and the next state of the generator. So this is our return value. F, say, gen prime. Random R. All right, then we're going to set um, the game state. Uh, just trying to remember the the. Le the blah, 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 lens operator name. Uh, it's going to be F, uh, Gen Prime. And then pure F. Oh, it's lens.micro. What is it again? Dot equal. There we go. All right, that's how we do that. Okay. Then that's right into the phaser factor. Okay, so now testing this and making sure that we have implemented what we wanted correctly. That's gonna be fun. Um, we have deterministic randomness. Uh, but deciding if it's the right amount. Or like what a good test is basically. I think this is I think what we should do for this is maybe think about the ships um, the calculated damage in terms of different states of the enemy. What I mean by that is that we should probably check if the... One way we could we could do this without like talking about how much random factor is involved is that if we apply some damage to an enemy with shields, all right, that's gonna be their 
damage after after being returned from calculate enemy phaser damage this return value this returned enemy their damage is going to be less than by a certain amount or by some amount it's going to be smaller than the input enemy amount and if they have no shields it will be but the same enemy it'll be the same it'll be more than an enemy with shields I mean I think we could actually implement that first test pretty straightforwardly because like this enemy the type only says that there there's some values of enemy and the test is going to specify what the relationship is between this input enemy and this output enemy like how they're going to differ because the type doesn't specify that so we should probably do that that, that seems pretty easy so let's do a quick one so it should uh, apply some damage Now, int we know is going to be some amount greater than zero because that's like the way the parser works. When it passes in this int value, even though in our code we don't really, it doesn't really say that. So we could probably add like a, a type around this if we really wanted to be like super clear about that, that that should be like non-zero and not negative um, we're going to save ourselves the trouble of that for now let's see um, so basically we need start with something small like five all right let's start with our enemy and I don't like that. Bring it over here. That's fine. Enemy position X doesn't really matter. What does matter is the enemy. Um, oh. Just do something simple like 10. I don't have any indentation there. Is it oh, it's probably because I don't have a do block here. Take it there. Check it out. Um, okay, so then we need to talk about the enemy that gets damaged. Calculate uh, enemy phaser damage. And we're going to pass in five. And we'll pass in a zero and E, our enemy. This is a stateful function, so we're going to run our state. We only care about the return value. So I think it's run state D. And then um, we don't care about the index. Okay, and now we just have to write our expectation. And we could write as a boolean 
I wonder if there's like a better function for this in each spec. Should be, should be. That should throw. Should satisfy. That should be better. Because if we just use should be uh, true, then we won't get interesting. We won't get the nicer feedback that we should get from should satisfy. So, damaged enemy should satisfy. Yeah, we get a function here with, I guess, that value as input. And let's see. We want to take the We want to compare I'll kind of use a function damage enemy damage is applied no uh, damage Yeah, damage is applied. Let's just, let's just see how that reads. I think. Uh, damaged. Damage E and. We want to compare. Uh, case compare. Uh, damage E. The damaged enemies. Um, health. To e, the, the initial enemy is health. And if it's less than, then this is true. This should be good. Otherwise, I'm not aware of. That's probably to the compile because enemy health isn't the right field name for that, for one. Hit points. Which means we gotta call this hit points. And this hit points. Okay, we gotta bring that stuff into scope. And lens.micro. And so micro is probably not in there because yeah. Uh, package.
micro lens. Uh, that should be there. And MTL. And then we gotta bring the thing in scope <laughs> that we need to test. Okay, now we're good. And then we should be good. Oh, it isn't. What the heck? It is there. It should be there. Oh, phase damage. Phaser damage. So run state T is going to need uh, the state to run with. Should we be able to run state here arbitrarily, maybe? Initial state. Um, make standard generator one zero. Then we gotta do this whole saga dance. Random is in and it's oh initial state. it's in its state, but uh. Burr. Oh, what did I call it? Initial game state. Sheesh. Sheesh. What's going on, old man? Okay, that wants it to be a spec M. Um, maybe we gotta lift IO this. Or. Um, oh, I can make this pure. That's, that should work. Yeah, okay. Now it's just this part. Okay, so we have... We couldn't match the expected type. Uh, identity... Int enemy game state with actual type. Toppled it up. Okay, that's because run state's the wrong function. Um, exec. Identity game state, no, uh, it's eval. Eval state teams. Though. Try them all now. There's gonna be one more.
Okay, so we're in identity with our return type. Uh, I think we can just get that out, right? I think so. That's the identity monad. Oh, why we're getting identity back exactly? Oh, why this is a problem? Okay, data dot functor dot identity. Cool. And then a scope issue with E. get a name shadowing thing but uh should compile That's because I got these mixed up now. We call this enemy. We call this damaged enemy. That way it's a little clearer. Damaged enemy. Hit points should be less than the enemy hit points. Okay, cool. So just a couple of cleanup things and this is good. Okay, so we have a test for calculating the enemy phaser damage that tells us that we update the hit points field when applying this damage, some amount. All that matters is that the hit points are less than the enemy hit points. And we're only assuming here because, again, because of the the way the types are set up and such, um, this takes this function takes a parameter of integers. So part of the spec of this function of cal calculate enemy phaser damage is that damage is applied. Uh, the amount was given to calculate enemy phaser damage. This here has to be greater than or equal to zero. We could maybe comment that here. I'll bring this over a little bit to the left here. Um, uh, 
the amount parameter to uh, is a positive integer greater than zero as defined by the in the phaser command from the user and is restricted by the parser. Just a little note for ourselves when we're reading this later. Apply some damage, and this should be true. Well, currently we have no notion of shields. But I think this is this is pretty good so far. So let's just add this, and then we can talk about shields. Calculate enemy phaser damage. Take into account a small random variance, um, small random factor to adjust the input to scale the input uh, energy amount and the enemy's current shield value. Well, just by that, actually, at the moment. We're going to do the next part. Okay. Let's talk about enemy shields. First, we're going to need them. Let's make it an integer. Okay. Let's fix all the type errors we just created. Our empty sector definition, that's where it is. Let's start with an initial shield value of 10. Test, yeah. This test doesn't care about shields. None of these care about shields. Okay. Add shield value to enemy. Okay, so now with the shield value, we can take that into account in our calculation of the damage. Let's go back to combat. Calculate the enemy phaser damage. Okay. 
Okay, so the enemy... We're gonna subtract that. Shield value. Type it wrong. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Super. Uh, let's clean this up a little bit. Damage amount. Okay. Okay, so we subtract the enemy's current shield value from the amount of the phaser input phaser energy scaled by the random factor. And the next thing that I think we should do is decrement the enemy's shields or yeah scale their shields by the same factor amount uh, round it down Shield amount? Shield amount. We'll take the from integral of amount times factor. Minus the enemy. Oh no. So this should be enemy shield value.
I'm going to use shield amount to... function here like uh such shields all right and then we got to define that so that shields. So that compiles? No. And that doesn't yet because we got a apply this composed function together to its argument. Okay. Let's see. Almost. Almost. That's probably in our test code. Yeah. So let's go to our spec. So now I think we have two different contexts we should be applying our test in. When the shields are down, because if the shields are up and they are the exact value that the um, shield value is at. So if we input our phaser fire amount at 25 and the shield's value for the enemy is also 25, that means we're actually gonna do no damage to the enemy. Ooh. Something else I just thought of, uh, our random range could choose zero as a value and that we want to, I think, we want to omit value, we want to omit zero because we scale by a factor of zero and it's gonna be zero. And that's not what we want the factor to do. Okay, so we'll address that in a second. Okay, so... Um, so yeah, when when they're, when they're at full, power, full shields and we don't apply enough energy for our phasers to overpower their shields, it's going to bounce off the shields, right? Um... Right, because any amount scale well, unless our factor increases the random phaser fire. Like we it just for some reason hits a little just a little bit harder than it should have. It might over it might just barely overpower their shields, actually. So 
Uh, but but our test for our testing, we don't want. I think we want to eliminate that variable. Yeah. So I'm going to add a little context here. And I'll just indent this a little bit. So that should still be true. That's good. Um, so when the enemy shields are down, it should apply some damage, which is good. Now we have a different context when the shields are up. When the enemy shields are up. So how do it should absorb uh, uh, a phaser fire anything less than a shield value or if they're wildly different like if our, fa our factor shouldn't increase it so much that you could overpower the shields with like a really weak shot Yeah. Or it should prevent... There's another way we could say it. We should prevent some damage. Compared to an enemy with their shields down. Yeah, I think, I think this will be good. So what we can do is we can create two enemies, both alike in Fair Verona. In fact, I'm just going to cop out and paste this one. Hmm. Actually, this will be this will be hard to do because the standard generator state's going to change twice. What I was thinking is if we would do if we fired on one enemy with the same number of hit points that a shields down and and then again on another enemy whose shields are up the with the same amount the one with their shields down would have less hit points than the one with the shields up. That that should still work even with the randomness of the factor, accounting for the factor. Yeah. I think that, that should still be true. What's the problem here? Well, we can't have multiple contexts? That's... Parse error. 
Hang on a second. Change this to a function, uh, a let bound function instead. Okay, there's that where where block for some reason. Shield value five. Okay. Or maybe even like eight. That should be fine. Okay. Then we could get your damaged counterparts. E1 and damage D2. E1 has the shields down, E2 has the shields up. And so if we apply the damage to each, then um, The amount of damage to E1 should be more than the one damage to E2. Um, shield uh, protected damage. Reduce damage. Yeah, we'll write this a function like this. The shields reduced damage. Do case compare enemy one hit points to enemy two hit points. And so the enemy one hit points should be less than the enemy two hit points. That would be true. Everything else would be false. Should be dedented. Oh, well, that needs to be a tuple, right? Merp.
Uh, okay, this is an next. Oh, because uh, we don't know what those are yet. That's right. Uh, so we have to fill this in. That's what those type errors are all about. It's like, I don't know what the heck this is. You haven't told me what it is. I can't figure it out on my own. You gotta put something here. So we're gonna do that. Uh, we're gonna cut. We're gonna. Uh, we're gonna pop this cat, cat here. So we're going to do five damage to enemy to E1 and the same five damage to E2. Okay, cool. And that works. Uh, what's the problem here? Oh, sham shadows an existing binding. Okay, so it should prevent some damage, and the other thing is that it should reduce the shields by some amount. Create another enemy again. Create a shield value of 10. And we'll run the calculation. Over here. Uh -huh. Reduced. And this will take an enemy. And a damaged enemy. And we'll compare the enemy. Shield value to the damaged enemy shield value. And the undamaged enemy's shield value should be greater than anything else. One. I might have to flip those arguments around. Let's reduce. Uh, we'll just put a poppy in there like that. Okay, and what do we got here? Couple of things. 
Pop those like that. Pop that like that. I'm not sitting driver there. Bidip, dip, 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 dip. going on here oh okay type inference on our function isn't working here for some reason maybe because I passed in e here and it doesn't know what it's gonna get from should satisfy I mean that Seems like it should. Should type check. Let's see if we can um, add a type annotation here. Got to put the function there. I think that'll go. Okay, it doesn't. It fails. Okay, I think it could fail here if, um, because we shouldn't really be multiplying by the factor here and setting the shield amount to that. We should be reducing the shield amounts by, by something. We could reduce it, what, like by a fixed amount? Or we can calculate it based off of... Let's see, the difference in... Let's make it let's make it amount a certain amount like uh, the end and it's set it's a set shield amount let's call let's do it like apply damage or it does the difference. We just have to calculate how much to damage the shields by.
And we'll do like a Seems like a good amount. But right, like one. One plus the factor. Feels like it should be like a certain amount based on the phasers energy. Like, if our energy amount is the input, then maybe multiplying it by... Hmm. Because we don't want, like, the first shot to over... Power the shields and completely turn them off. Maybe it should be the damage, the shield, shield value divided by the damage amount. All right, so the damage amount already removes the shield value from the input damage, the input energy. So if, like, I shoot at you with 25, your shield value is 10. That means, barring the factor, uh, eliminating that, we get uh, 15. And... We should reduce your shield amount for the next round by um, your current shield value. Hmm, is your current shield value ratio or something like that. Yeah. Hmm. I don't I don't have a good formula for that off the top of my head, so I'm just going to say like 2. And then we'll update the enemy instead of set shields. Apply uh, damage to your shields. And this will be similar to this. Except hit points, so it'll be shield value. And amount. Although, maybe we should call it all amount damage as well. I'll leave myself a little note. To do.
Well, that should make our test pass at least. Okay. And then, as long as the shield damage is reduced by some amount, that test will still hold. Alright, so that should be good. Okay. Let's commit that as well. Bam, because we're almost out of time here. So this will update, calculate uh, enemy phaser damage. Damage. Reduce damage dealt by shield value and reduce shield value by a fixed amount. Super. I think that's all makes sense. Let's push that all up. Bang. Okay, so next week we will have to um, we will look into I guess adding kind of those extra UI elements we wanted to add to the game uh, for when we apply damage. All right, so we um, fire our phasers twenty. I'm not gonna move closer. No. Oh. Closer. Phasers. All right. So it says we damaged the enemy enemy ship there for thirty because we didn't divide anything else out uh, amongst multiple ships. That could be scaled out. So we just need to work on the damage report uh, and just make sure that we're actually like damaging the ships and then we can work on like destroying the ships and um, testing this out with like multiple enemies making sure that all works and then jeez uh, we need to add more stuff so we will get on to that next week when you tune in uh, this has been wonderful thank you for tuning in if you haven't tuned in, if you haven't seen this before all the code for this project is up on github so you can check that out here. Everything we just worked on uh, is at Agent Ultra slash Lambda Trek. I am Agent Ultra. You can find me on the GitHubs. You can find me on the Mastodons. I'm on the Types.pl server at Agent Ultra. And if you're following here on Twitch, you know you can like subscribe and all that stuff. If you like, you'll get notifications when I go online and stream. If you are watching my YouTube channel because you're in a different time zone or what have you, uh, you know what to do there. Like, subscribe, and all that stuff too, because that'd be really helpful. And, uh, yeah. I do these streams Tuesday evenings, about 10 after 8 in the Eastern Standard Time Zone. So, if you want to tune in next week and follow along, feel free. Down. That'd be my pleasure. Thanks again for watching. May all your monads be free and may your types always check. We'll see you next week.